In case you didn't already know, I am a CB radio enthusiast. Now, I'm not a hardcore CB guy, but that's where I started out in the radio hobby. And from time to time, I like to put the CB on and listen, and maybe even do a little operating here and there. Now, I had this radio, my President McKinley, mounted in my Chevy Suburban for a little while. I ended up taking it out so I could repurpose the antenna mount for something else and never ended up putting it back in. But my schedule is about to change and I'm going to be doing some commuting. So I thought it might be handy to be able to put the CB back in the car when I need it. I didn't want to mount it permanently in the Suburban because I'm probably not going to be driving the Suburban most of the time. I'm going to be using my Toyota Corolla, which is much better on gas. So instead of buying two different radios and installing two radios in two different vehicles, I thought maybe I could put something together to make this thing portable so that I could move it from vehicle to vehicle or take it out and store it when I don't need to use it. So just looking around the radio shack here, I found this old plastic ammo container. I did a little bit of measuring and I think this radio will just barely fit in here with a few modifications. So here's a look at what I've assembled for the build so far. I've got the President McKinley radio here, of course, and I found a power cord in my junk box. It's got a CB radio plug on one end and power poles on the other, so I can use this to hook up to whatever power source is convenient. There is a fuse here too, and some ugly shrink wrap over the wires. It may not look pretty, but it'll work. And then of course here is the ammo box I'll be dealing with. This is just a cheap plastic box, and I did some basic measurements, and this radio should fit in here just barely. Now it won't be environmentally sealed, at least not the way I'm going to build it, but if you're thinking of building something like this and you need it environmentally tight, I'm sure that can be done. Now the first problem I have here is that the McKinley will sort of fit in the box, but the antenna connector is going to end up sticking out the bottom. So I need to drill a hole. So to plan out where I want the hole, I've got the bracket installed on the radio, and I actually took a little screwdriver bit and put it in the antenna connector here. This has got kind of a sharp tip on it. I lined everything up the way I wanted it and I pressed it into the plastic. So I now have a dimple in there so I know where to drill. To provide enough clearance for the SO239, I'm going to open the hole all the way up to 3 quarter inch with my step bit. Now that I have that access hole there, I'm going to drop this in so the SO239 goes through it. So you can see the radio is dropped in, the body of it is seated down on the bottom of the case, and my mounting bracket is right here up against this wall of the case. Now before I go any further, I'm going to try and close the lid and make sure that the knobs clear the top. And as you can see, as I drop it down, it actually doesn't. And that's because there are some strengthening ribs here that are, of course, lining up right to where the knobs are. I'm going to make some measurements so I know where to trim the strengthening ribs. Now, the knobs themselves are about a half inch in diameter. Now, we don't have to be real precise about this, so I'm actually going to give myself a half an inch on either side of the center line. moment of truth, we're good to go. So now I also need to drill sort of a clearance slot in the bottom here for the power cord so that can kind of stick out. So I've got my rectangle measured out here. Hopefully you guys can see it. Now this would be easier to do with a Dremel tool, but I'm too lazy to go out in the garage and get it. So we're going to try this thing and hope I don't mangle up the box. Not the prettiest hole I've ever made, but it should be functional. I'll use this sandpaper to deburr the edges, and we'll do a test fit. And it looks like I maybe need to trim this back edge just a little bit for clearance, but I think we've got it more or less in the right spot. So now I need to mark out where I want to drill holes for the mounting bracket. And I'll use a marker to mark out the corner of the bracket. So now I'm going to pull the bracket off the radio. So I obviously can't fit my drill inside of there, but I've got this little hand drill reamer tool that I should be able to use to kind of start a hole so I can locate it. I 
Now I'll drop the radio back into the case, make sure everything lines up, and now we'll install the bracket with some hardware that I found out in the garage. Screws, nuts, and washers. Now, of course, with the radio and the bracket here, it's a little hard to get at the screws, but if I use some long nose pliers and some patience, I should be able to do this. I think we're good to go. Let's test this thing out and see how it works. Now, for right now, I've got this powered with a cigarette lighter extension cable with power poles on one end. I'll plug the other end into the cigarette lighter. Now, don't give me a hard time about the cigarette lighter plug. Keep in mind, this is a temporary installation, and I'm really using it just for receive. I'm hardly, if ever, going to transmit. Anyway, the antenna I'm using is an old mag mount that I found in the garage. And for right now, testing purposes, I'm just running the coax out the door here and I've got it on the trunk. Now I can do one more thing before I power this up. I can leave this on the seat just like it is and use it. Or if I feel like this thing is in my way or blocking access to my two meter radio over here, I can actually pop the cover off of this ammo box and set it aside and then have a little more room for this thing. Break 19, break 19. How are we looking 84 westbound? Hello radio, what's happening? CQDX, CQDX, unit 741 calling CQDX and standing by. Check, check, I appreciate the shot back. From downtown snowy Reno, Nevada, we're waving, have a good evening. CQDX, CQDX, 741, Connecticut, CQDX. Hey, 0, uh, 0, 7, 30, 7, South Carolina, let me tell you something, my brother, man. I got a 20 dB's only in Jamaica. <laughs> I got a 20 dB's. I'm going to take it easy over there in the Cadillac, South Carolina. Zero seven thirty seven. all the best. Your friend down here on the island, 1963. Have a good day. Now, one thing I forgot to show earlier, now that I'm ready to pack this up, is that the microphone also fits in the container here. I kind of just barely, and I can't leave it plugged in when I close the door, but it does fit in here. Everything that we heard today, of course, was skipped. None of the local guys were around, and this setup with stock power and that little antenna isn't going to do much for skip shooting. But again, that's not the point of this setup. The point is to have something that I can put in the car quickly and use for traffic monitoring. Now, of course, I built this for my CB radio, but there's no reason why you couldn't throw, say, like a 50-watt ham radio 2-meter mobile in there, or a dual bander, or even a mobile scanner. Pretty much anything that you might want to move from car to car and then store later on is fair game for a little go box like this. So hopefully, my quick and dirty little build here gives you some ideas on how you could build something similar that'll work for your application. You can make it as elaborate or as simple as you'd like. Thanks for watching.